Good evening, and I'd like to call the January Steering Legislative and Governmental Committee to order. Our uh, first item of business is to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, call on Vice Chairman Commissioner Phillips. And Mr. Chairman, I move that they be approved as mail. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our next item of business, we need to fill two vacancies on the Conservation Board. Uh, I believe we have received uh, four applica three applications for that. Um, we have Mr. Estes, Mr. Marshall, and David Adams, and I'm sorry, four, and Ms. Lynn Duke. Um, are any of these applicants in the, I know, I know a couple of them are. Okay, we'd like to give all of you uh, an opportunity to speak. Um, this will be a little odd, I guess, if you want to come up here um, so you can uh, see, um, speak into the microphone. Just tell us why you're running, a little bit about yourself, and anything you'd like for us to know. And we can start with is Mr. Estes here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Jim Estes. I've been uh, on the Conservation Board since I believe 1996. I have served uh, as chairman for the last seven or eight years through two phases of the Lang Adagru Park. Um, I enjoy, enjoy that, and that's the reason uh, I'm running for it again. Any questions? Thank you. Um, Mr. Marshall. All right. Mr. Marshall is a teacher at Oakland High School, an ag teacher. Um, he called me a few minutes ago and had to take his, his wife had to take his uh, little boy to the doctor for some kind of emergency. So he may show up and he may not. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Mr. David Adams. Chairman, committee members, appreciate the opportunity to come before you and ask for your uh, vote in this uh, board. Uh, I live on a own and live on a century-old farm that has, through the years, still farms corn and soybeans and uh, hay. And uh, I've lived in this community for about 30 years. I've admired the Conservation Board for many years. I have had the opportunity to go before them and um, always thought that they would be a good board to serve on. And since I have retired and become a senior citizen, I feel like I've got the time and the energy to serve on this board, and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Adams. One quick question for oh, Mr. Yes. Adams, if you don't mind. Are you serving on any other boards or committees at this time? I'm serving on the equalization. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Lynn Duke. prepared but since everybody's keeping it short and sweet I will just cut to the chase um, I'm currently an employee with uh, Rutherford County I've been so for 17 years 10 of those in an administrative position um, I've worked with the juvenile probation office for seven years and with the juvenile detention center for 10 um, <clears throat> I've born born and raised in Murfreesboro uh, currently have a, a active participation in the county 4-H program. I've been attending the board meetings regularly and uh, I've been proudly serving this community for my entire professional career and I'd like to continue to do so through the conservation board. Same, same question, any other boards, commissions besides the board? I don't have any that I uh, serve on but I do have to report to uh, some committees through my position as director of a county department. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. We have a motion. Motion to uh, to nominate all and then to vote for two. 
Do have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, Ms. Becky, will you please call the roll? Mr. Estes, Mr. Marshall. Commissioner Gooch. Mr. Estes and Mr. Adams. Commissioner Jordan. Mr. Estes, Mr. Adams. Commissioner Phillips. Mr. Estes and Mr. Marshall. Mr. Estes and Mr. Adams. Mr. Estes with seven, Mr. Adams with five, and Mr. Marshall with two. So it's Estes and Adams. Mr. Estes and uh, Mr. Adams, well, all applicants, we uh, appreciate your uh, interest in this position and ask Mr. Estes and Mr. Adams to, if you will, be present at the next commission meeting uh, where you will be voted on by the full commission. Thank you all for being here. Next, we have the appointment of Judicial Commissioner Lisa Shores. Do we have a motion to that effect? So moved. We have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now on to our, uh, our last ag listed agenda item is to our regular annual meeting with our legislative delegation. This is always an exciting, uh, exciting night and uh, good to uh, catch up with, uh, kind of get a heads up of what's coming on this legislative session. Um, we appreciate all of you all being here with us. First, let me introduce the steering committee, if you will. First, uh, Vice Chairman Jeff Phillips, Commissioner F Gary Farley, Commissioner Gooch, Commissioner Sandlin, also Commissioner Black and Commissioner Jordan. Also in our audience, other commissioners, I appreciate you all being here. Commissioner Stevens, Commissioner Jernigan, Commissioner Ely, Commissioner Cook, Commissioner uh, uh, Sorrento. We appreciate uh, you all being here. Um, and now also who uh, are respective guests that we are pleased uh, that you took time to be here. I know some of you have other things going on tonight as I know this is a very, very busy time of year uh, as you're getting geared up and we appreciate you all being here. So no further ado, I'll spare the introductions and let you all go through that uh, yourselves. Um, and I believe if it's okay with uh, the delegation, I'd like to start with uh, Representative Joe Carr. Is it on? Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Commissioner. And um, I just appreciate you having us here. Real quickly, uh, we just had reorganization up in the House caucus as they did in the Senate. Um, we've got a new speaker, Speaker Harwell, uh, for the very first time in the history of Tennessee. I believe we're going to have a Republican governor as well as Republican uh, House and Senate. Um, but to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, that's not going to make a great deal of difference because we still all have to govern effectively. Um, just real briefly, some of the issues I think that are relevant to Rutherford County and Tennessee, of course, are the approximate one to $1.5 billion deficit we have. We are not going to be receiving any federal money by which to assist in balancing that budget or that deficit. Uh, the good news is, however, um, that uh, we did an extremely good job in the last couple of years taking federal money and retiring reoccurring expense. So as a result of the foresightedness of the last administration and that uh, General Assembly, we're not in nearly as bad a shape as we otherwise could have been, and certainly we're not in nearly as bad a shape as some of the other states. Uh, currently, our, um, our indebtedness relative to our income and our bond rating is like first or second in the nation of the 50 states, which is extremely good. And the reason I bring that up is that um, where there's still an opportunity, a real opportunity this session or maybe the next session, but certainly in this General Assembly to get the MTSU Science build, Building funded. Uh, that's certainly in no way a promise. 
Uh, but um, I was recently appointed by the Speaker to be on the Education Committee and Secretary of that committee and Vice Chair of the Subcommittee. And I know that the Governor has in mind to remake education in Tennessee, both K-12 and higher ed, and with an emphasis at Middle Tennessee State University. So we've got our hands full, we've got a lot to do, and uh, we'll endeavor to do just that. And again, thank you for having us. Thank you. Senator Tracy, would you like to lead us on? We'll move right quickly. Uh, Joe touched on pretty much all the highlights. Uh, as you all know, well know, uh, I'm senator for the 16th district, which is really the eastern part of Rutherford County and includes Bedford and Moore County. It's really going to be an interesting time. We do have a new reorganization, and the Senate really didn't change that much. We still have Speaker Ramsey as our speaker. We did get new committees, and uh, I'll be chairman of transportation. I'm still on the education committee and on state and local committee. So there's the challenges are going to be great to govern because of uh, Representative Carr pointed out with the 1.5 to 1.7 million dollar billion dollar deficit uh, Governor Haslam is already committed to go through and audit each department and review each department of state government today as y'all well know governing at the county commission level people want an effective efficient government more than ever that I can recall in my lifetime they want it effective and they want it efficient same way with the state government. I think we're committed to do that. Uh, the challenges is going to be on the budget, and then and when that does, it always affects you as a county commissioner, as county government, city governments, school boards. Uh, so that's going to be the challenge as we move on down. As the session moves on, we come back in on February the 7th. Uh, we will hear from the governor pretty close at that time, and he will give us the state of the state to see where we are as far as money. I'm going to give you some optimistic views. The revenues are up the last three months of 2010. Uh, October, November, and December, all revenues were up. Not a lot, but they were up. That means that the economy may be moving forward just a little bit as far as sales revenue, so that's a good sign. And uh, Joe pointed out that we are in much better shape in uh, the country than many other states because of our low debt status. So we're coming at it at a very good way compared to others. So it's going to be an interesting session. I look forward to hearing from you during the session. If there's anything that comes across that you think we uh, need to look at, I'll be glad to do it. Look forward to sharing some ideas with you tonight. And I'll turn it over to Representative Womack. Well, thank you all for the invitation tonight to be here. And I'll just kind of piggyback on what Senator Tracy and Representative Carr just said. Um, Speaker Harwell is serious about streamlining the government. Uh, one example of one of her first acts, last year we had 25 subcommittees, 13 committees. This year we have 13 subcommittees and 13 committees. So she eliminated right off the bat 12 subcommittees, which means things are going to happen faster with less red tape and with less argument. Uh, good things are going to happen a lot more quickly and they're going to get passed without so many amendments to try to, to block these uh, good ideas that we do have. I've been appointed to the Judiciary Committee and also the Consumer and Employee Affairs. And what that means, and uh, working closely with uh, Senator Tracy and Senator Ketron in the Senate and Joe Carr in the uh, House, and on the Judiciary Committee, we're looking at tort reform and one of the several immigration bills. And then in the Consumer and Employee Affairs, we're also going to be looking at uh, workers' comp reform. Matter of fact, I'm meeting Thursday with the Speaker Pro Temp, Judd Matheny, and we're going to be putting together several bills that didn't quite pass last year that I'm pretty sure are going to pass this year. So I'm excited about the, these reforms from immigration, tort, as well as workers' comp. Uh, couple that with no state income tax, the uh, constitutional amendment, we're going to be passing that. Uh, and that pretty much details or requires any kind of a state income tax in the future be put before the people of Tennessee for a vote. And so no longer can an attorney general speak up and go, I don't interpret our constitution as no state income tax allowed. It'll have to go before the people. Uh, you take those four major areas and couple that with Governor Haslam's excellent appointee of commerce and insurance, uh, 
Commissioner Haggerty, isn't it? Okay. This man comes in with a Rolodex three times the size of Tennessee, and he can bring a lot of good jobs to the state. And if we do these reforms that I've just talked about and they pass, there's going to be a lot of businesses willing to come into Tennessee as well as our own local businesses being able to hire more without their increase in, in cost. So it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, hopefully the cavalry is on the way and help is on the way to job creation in Tennessee. Commissioner's glad to be here uh, tonight. We had a good week last week. We were sworn in Tuesday morning. Um, and I'm proud that we elected governor, uh, Democrats as well as, as uh, uh, Republicans unanimously appointed the first female speaker uh, in Tennessee's history. Um, I was appointed by Speaker Harwell to health and transportation. Um, a lot of needs is, that need to be met, uh, all boils down to dollars and cents, as y'all well know. Um, we had a good meeting today. Uh, Representative Womack was in attendance with uh, uh, John Morgan and uh, Governor Haslam. Talked to, it was education boot camp, but I want to read a quote um, from the inauguration. I told Governor Haslam that I was going to borrow his quote. Um, it's by Thomas Friedman that says, we're leaving an era where to be mayor, governor, senator, or president was, to, was on balance to give things away to people. And we are entering an era where to be a leader will mean on a balance to take things away from people. Um, that is the only way we can get our fiscal house in order before the market brutally does it for us. Um, I admire and I applaud our governor for making tough choices. Um, you know, sometimes it's not going to be politically popular to uh, run counter to what um, people want and demand sometimes. But um, we're in a we're in a uh, almost a paradigm shift when it comes to the economy. Um, you know, not trying to be disagreeable with uh, Senator Tracy, but you know. I want to be as optimistic as I can, um, but I see the needs out there. Borders in Laverne just closed two weeks ago. Uh, you know, Whirlpool closed, what, a year and a half ago. Um, one thing I did ask the governor was um, on retraining uh, with, with the workforce who, you know, maybe been employed at Whirlpool 25 years or Borders. Uh, the te Tennessee Technology Centers that we recently met with have been um, very productive. Unfortunately, they're at capacity. Um, but I'm just uh, excited to, to uh, work with this new um, administration and uh, this new session. And um, my door will always be open and my phone will always be on if I can help in any way. Thank you. Thank you all. I think uh, at this time, we'll open the, uh, I guess the floor up to uh, any of the steering committee members. If uh, you all have any questions, any thoughts, any comments you'd like to share or ask of the delegation. jump into where we've to some uh, uh, waters that we've treaded before um, and, and just ask about the uh, Streamline Sales Tax Act, uh, where we stand on that. It appears that uh, the last several years uh, that we've kind of gotten an answer that we really don't know where we're going with that, but is there? Still the same answer as far as I, I checked on that last week and uh, no one's talking about it. So as you well know, it's sort of been kicked down, down the road the last two or three years uh, because there's so many ramifications to it. Uh, I haven't heard anyone that's willing to tackle it. It's going to be interesting now that with new commissioners and new administration, they may want to move forward with it, but I haven't heard anything uh, talked about in that regard. And let me point this out. I think you're going to see this first year in, in 2011 uh, the governor and his cabinet, and I think the General Assembly, basically everything we're going to do is around job creation. I think you're going to see everything that we do is going to be job creating because uh, Tennessee, Tennesseans are hurting across the state, unemployment rates too high, so I think anything that affects uh, jobs is not going to be dealt with. So I, it's going to be interesting to see how things work, but I, I anticipate that that we'll be doing a lot of things to help small business, to encourage small business. Uh, so I haven't heard anything talked about that. Could happen, but I, it won't happen. We won't even get into it to about March till we see what's going on, I think. But I know exactly what you're talking about. We've talked about it the last two or three years, and 
the last administration never did want to move on it, and you know I think that's going to depend on the administration if they want to move forward. Thank you, Senator. Knowing, knowing that the economy the way it is, and knowing um, the way the local governments are uh, strapped for cash, uh, you know, due to the downsides of the economy, my my biggest thing is, I, and and I think you will, but I watch the type of legislation that will be detrimental to um, the local government. You know, be that safeguard for us. Uh, you know, so. If you would just guard that for us and, 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 and try to keep some stuff off of us that's going to cause us to unfunded mandates and, you know, those type of things, it would be very much appreciated. And I know, that, like you said, there's going to be jobs are going to be the big issue. But if there's anything that comes up, be our safeguard for us. Commissioner, that's interesting because I know recently there has been a lot of talk within the General Assembly um, as a result of this last election year to those who just recently got elected and, and, and those who were elected prior to that to push back against Washington against unfunded mandates. I know that we get a tremendous amount of unfunded mandates from Washington down to the state level and the state's got to figure out how to fund what Washington requires of us. <clears throat> I think what our colleagues are now just becoming cognitive, cognitive of is that the state has a tendency to sometimes do the same thing to county and, and city government. And so what we've got to do is to the extent that we push back to Washington, resisting those that saying, you know what, don't send us a mandate unless you're going to provide funding for that mandate. We've got to be consistent so that we don't do the same thing to local government. And so what I'm asking you guys to do is if you, if you get a whiff or a smell that something like that's going on, let us know because it's not our intention to do that. Now that's not to say that sometimes that doesn't happen, but we want, to, we want to catch it on the front end, not on the back end, if that makes any sense. So I think philosophically, ideologically, I think that legislature is understanding that if we're going to resist mandates from Washington, then we've got to be extremely careful about issuing those same unfunded mandates to local government. Right. So there's, well, there needs to be some consistency there. And my second question would be, um, do you have any idea on, as far as on BEP funding, anything in that nature, what, what that's going to look like as far as our school system? Well, I know that the past administration was dead set on making sure the BEP, BEP funding was there. And the talk that I'm hearing out of the current and new administration is that there is going to be a very strong initiative with regard to K-12 through education. As a matter of fact, and again, I, I don't know, uh, being on the Education Committee and Secretary of that committee, it's really early yet, Mr. Commissioner Farley, to know what the uh, administration has in mind, but everything I'm hearing out of the administration is, is that they are bringing business leaders to the table with regard to specifically addressing the educational needs of this state. Their long-term plan is this. We cannot create high-quality jobs and attract high-quality businesses unless we, the business community, the educational community, the academic community, and the public as a whole come to the table and commit to a strong K-12 program and a higher ed program as well as VOTEC. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know the details, but i got to believe they're very, very serious about this. And I guess my third question would be, is there anything that, um, as far as through the lottery, I know right now it's for uh, higher education. Is there any talk or any thinking about uh, where it could be for bricks and mortar again? Well, it's not just for the lottery. I think there was just a grant given to, um, yeah, Rutherford County to Scales Elementary School on energy, for, energy efficiency that came through the, the lottery, I believe. Now. Quite honestly, I think we've taken, in my opinion, we've taken some steps backward with regard to lottery funding by lowering the standards uh, for those who qualify for the lottery. I'd like to take another look at some of those things. But at the same time, you know, the lottery has, the lottery funds have kind of peaked a little bit. So we've kind of got addicted to something that I think we need to be careful about drawing down too much. I don't know where the lottery funding fits into their overall plan and, and, and scheme. But I'm sure it figures in there somewhere. They just—they're just not releasing very many details right now, Mr. Okay. Commissioner. Well, 
first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on, on your service to Rutherford County and to our constituents. I know that uh, Representative Walmack represents my uh, constituents, uh, Blackman and the Florence area, and of course, Senator Katrin. Uh, just to reiterate on what uh, Commissioner Farley has already spoken on, on unfunded mandates, in the past, the state has balanced their budgets on the backs of the county. Um, I think that most of you have committed to not raising taxes, but uh, as you know, if you vote for an unfunded mandate, that is in essence voting for, could be voting for a tax increase on, on certain peoples. Um, and secondly, and, and finally, a concern that I'm hearing from some of my constituents and my professional colleagues is the concern of possible legislation that would require um, over-the-counter cough and cold medication to be have it require a prescription from a physician. This would be a great undue uh, burden on, on my constituents. Um, I understand the need to regulate pseudofederin. That medication is already required to be purchased through the pharmacy uh, with valid ID. But to require someone to go see a doctor just to get NyQuil would be um, a burden. I think that uh, people without insurance could not afford to go to a doctor just to treat uh, symptoms of a, of a cold or stuff he knows. So if you would maybe comment if you have any information on that. I, I, I only know a little bit about what, just to be quite honest, some of the lobbyists are telling me with regard to this issue. And, and what I'm understanding is that the two sides, law enforcement's wanting a prescription for those medications that you now can buy over the counter. But the, over the, the way they're purchasing those now is that they, when they buy them over the counter, they, they have to enter it into a log book. I believe that's correct. Uh, it's not a prescription, but there is a log that is used. Well, it is entered. You can use a log or uh, through the computer. Right. So that's tracked. Uh, yeah, so they tracked. Can't, they can't Although drop it. It's, but it's still over the counter. It is over the counter, but you do see, must go to the pharmacy to purchase the pseudofederin products. That has been taken off the shelf. Right. But my concern, and that's fine. Okay. But the other code and cough medication that I'm hearing would require a prescription. E even that medication that would require a prescription contains a certain ingredient that over the other over-the-counter doesn't have. I, I and, be, and, and people to, to go to the doctor, if you don't have insurance, right. and pay $75 or $150 right. just to treat a common cold. Commissioner, I quite honestly, I, I, I don't believe that bill's gonna have much traction in the House. I've talked to both sides on it. I have yet to see the problem okay. clearly defined such that it warrants legislative action in that regard, just to be honest. I would you. agree I, with that. And I, I quite honestly, yeah. I can't support it at this time. Now, that's, okay. now I, I say that unless I get some new information that demonstrates action is required mm -hmm. in the part of the legislature, but I don't see the problem necessarily being solved by the legislature at this point. I appreciate it. Just to follow, follow up on uh, what Representative Carr said, yeah, it's being discussed. Uh, there's also some alternatives being looked at too besides being prescription. Uh, so I, I met with law enforcement this week and they talked about it. So there's some things being discussed. It is uh, whether it will pass like it's being talked about will be a different story. Evidently meth is coming back. We're having some problems in some of the counties in my district, uh, the law enforcement I met with this week, but there may be some ways to attack it. You know, other than that. Now, to go back to you talked about unfunded mandates. Uh, many of the legislators up there have been in local government. Also, too, good thing this time with the new administration, if you'll notice, many of the new administrators are former mayors. So they understand local government. They understand the burden that it puts on local government that state or federal can put on state. So I, I think you're going to see much more awareness of, of that going through in the next... <coughs> this year, next year, in legislation in this General Assembly about that because we've got people that's been there and they understand it. If you just push it down, it's going to put pressure on the local government and uh, I think you'll see uh, a lot more attention to that. First, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Representative Womack. Uh, he represents my area in District 9 over there for his uh, election win as well as Representative Sparks and uh, Representative Carr in their re-election. So uh, proud you all back. And uh, uh, Senator Tracy, we appreciate you being back too. Um, we've already asked a question on the BEP funds. The uh, prisoner funding increase always comes up. Of 
course, when we're subsidizing, I just mentioned to the mayor just a second ago, uh, or asked him, what do you think our thoughts are on it? Well, you gotta ask every year. So uh, we're asking again, because we're having to, as taxpayers, having to fill the void for what the state doesn't fulfill. And uh, we need to ask every year and, and keep that on the record that uh, it's a constant issue. And, and so I'm asking if you can uh, fight for us and, and get some more money on the prisoner funding there, we need it because uh, um, uh, that population out there is growing too. We've got some issues coming here that's uh, we're going to have to do some maintenance on the building or continue maintenance and do some, you know, fixing and, and we're the only jail here for Rutherford County. So um, I, I don't need to comment on that. I just ask you to, to, to keep us in the loop on that. Another thing has happened this year in the past couple years really with uh, the economy and what's going on um, and our development tax is going down because building isn't the way it's been in the past few years and continuing to be kind of flat or, or going down. Uh, one, one bill that y'all did to help some other counties is uh, the development tax thing that y'all did for uh, helping other counties. At the very end of that bill, and I think it's labeled that, I'm not for sure if it's it, the actual wording of it, but it's the develop, development tax, <clears throat> is uh, the real estate transfer fee. On the end of that bill y'all put on there, there's certain things that counties can't do uh, in conjunction with what y'all had passed there. Uh, years ago when we put in place the development tax here for Rutherford County, we talked about some other things that we might do or might have the option to do. Um, was one was the real estate transfer. And uh, with that being put on that bill, we can't rescind our development tax or even think about it um, with that part of the real estate transfer being at the end of that bill. And I think there's some other counties that are thinking that we need to start it through the loop here. But <clears throat> as far as a funding mechanism, it's more of a stable across the board funding mechanism that's worked positively or a positive for a number of states that has a real estate transfer fee uh, better than impact fees and development taxes and stuff like that where it's more of, you know, people are scaling down and, and, and buying up, you know, when the, when the kids leave to go to college or whatever, they're selling the, the five bedroom house and moving down to the two or three bedroom house or whatever, or a condo or whatever. And so any real estate transfer, whether it be land or houses or what, and even commercial, then there's a fee attached to that and, and, and a, a lower fee as far as compared to our development tax that could help us in the Rutherford County as a consistent basis across the board. There's a little opposition to it too, but uh, with the Real Estate Commission um, as a majority at that point in time, we talked about it because we formed a committee together to try to see other forms of revenue. And uh, with this hardened time of, of uh, budgets. There's no easy budget coming along these days, and, and there hasn't been ever. But still, and it's going to get continue to get to get tougher. But if you would look at that bill, and if you need help from us and other counties too, we need to get something started on that just to take that part out at the very end of that bill as far as uh, the real estate transfer to allow other counties to do other things if they have a development tax or impact fee that they're doing right now. They can't do anything else. And we would. I'm not saying that we would do both. Definitely not. I would want to rescind the development tax and, and do the real estate transfer to give us on a more even keel and a, and a better base as far as our financial needs are coming in. So if you take a look at that, I'd appreciate it. But, uh, uh, and you may comment on that if you, if you can. I'll comment on it. I'm sure we'll look at it. I, I don't know. I remember it's pretty difficult, but we'll look at it. I, I, it hadn't been much discussion about that uh, with everything going on with the economy the way it's been. So uh, I'm saying it will be discussed. Uh, I know I know exactly what you're talking about. It's not when you start doing those kind of things. It, it's much more difficult than than you might think with all the different factions that right. it affects. So, but right. I'm sure some of that will be looked at. Uh, I haven't heard any discussion of any bills to do that. Um, there's a possibility that it, it could be looked at, though. I had <clears throat> wondered at the beginning when y'all passed that why it was put on the end of the bill and looked a little bit further. And really, I think there was some concern with um, double dipping, so to speak, which I can understand if there's development tax and then there's all these other things that are added on in your building industry when everything is 
everybody's building and money's flowing, everything's great. But when it stops, then that's when you start looking. So um, uh, I think that was put in there so it wouldn't be two of them added to a county or three or four. There were some other things in there in the end of that bill, but uh, that was the one that would um, that it stifles me is about the real estate transfer. So there's some others in there that may be just taken out and just leave the development tax on its own the way you built it. And I think the increase was like 10% every four years. So that's only, you know, 10. I think y'all put a dollar in there, so it was a square foot. So it'd be a ten dollar ten cents after four years if they if the county wanted to adopt that. But appreciate it. Let me, let me piggyback on what Commissioner Salmon was just talking about. That's called the County's Powers Relief Act, if I that's remember what it right. Is. There we go. And I also had it on my list too. I think that was a four year. You can't do anything to it, and that's. Uh, ending this year and just a thought in addition to that would be counties such as Rutherford County that had something in place before that act was passed uh, to grandfather those counties in to where they can deal with what they had before without having to uh, go under this uh, state program if, if something like that is possible and if it is uh, when would you need to know from us what we would recommend or like to do. When is that deadline for addressing those things? Well, we need to know in the uh, 1st of February. The bill cutoff is going to be February the 17th. So if we're going to do any bills, it needs to be to us sometime 1st of February. And you're right, that County Powers Act, uh, that was a two-year process. A lot of give and take, a lot of discussion, a lot of compromise. That was a very contentious i remember that very much so yeah but if you're going to get us some recommendations i'd do it pretty quick in the next couple of weeks thank you i want to i want to welcome all all three of you here and uh, your support of education in general which is what my really two one comment and one question. Your support of education in general is deeply appreciated. Um, and the, and the Representative Carr's remarks particularly, I think. Um, I wanted to just repeat a little bit, but give you maybe a more practical application of this. Well, we're in the process in Rutherford County of um, considering at least a new high school, which is, um, of course, an extremely expensive project. It's 49 to 50 million. I have no idea whether it will pass or not um, if of this year or next, but it's certainly in consideration. And what our fear is, and this is just a general comment and you've, you've really already replied to it, our, our fear and concern is that we get in the, we pass this at some point, whenever that is, if that happens, and then we get in the middle of this huge construction project and we lose um, a third of our BEP money. And that would be, um, it would force the county commission to make some decisions that I promise you they do not want to make. And th that's how critical that BEP money is. With, with that said, and going back to what Commissioner Farley said a minute ago, um, we get a lot of uh, monies and grants from all kinds of sources, of course, just like the state does. We can use very little of it for bricks and mortar. And actually building a building, which is, and, um, citizens of Rutherford County can pay for the teachers and the educational program that goes in it, but boy, this, the, these, these huge loans and borrowing that has to go on for 20 years is killing us. And if you, if you see any lottery money down there <laughs> or any other source of money down there that we could get on a one-time basis maybe to help us build a school, not pay for it, just help us build a school, sure would be appreciated, gentlemen. Thank you. You might if I make a quick comment on that. I was talking, we had the uh, education forum today for about five hours up at the Capitol and uh, they're looking at raising the standards on the lottery. 23 on the ACT possibly and or 21 and a 3.25 grade point average to even qualify. Now that's not the students currently in school but this is the incoming students. 
they're forecasting a, a huge drop in the lottery funds. So I can tell you right now, the for lottery money going to construction, which I am a proponent of, it's not going to be there. They're looking at finding ways to save money on that program. So it's even hurting as well. Thank you. I'd just like to <clears throat> congratulate Commissioner Sparks on his uh, election and Commissioner uh, Representative Womack on his uh, race. And uh, I guess I'm going to change gears a little bit. I'm going to ask uh, Senator Tracy about uh, some of the road projects that's going on here. Uh, I know it sounds like a broke record every year, but uh, Jefferson Pike, it's uh, dear to my heart. Uh, Commissioner Black, uh, you're exactly right. The good thing that that I see about roads coming up the next couple of years, the it affects jobs. So I think the administration is going to be very cognizant of how important roads are. Jefferson Pike, uh, and I've beat that drum that I believe it is the number one project in Rutherford County right now, and I think TDOT understands that. Uh, they have they're in the first phase now of doing the engineering of uh, Jefferson Pike, that means from 840 to Smyrna. If you'll notice if you're out there, there's some flags up where they've been doing some engineering and surveying and so forth. That's the first phase. Second phase would be to buy the right of way and then the third phase to fund the, the paving or the construction of it. So I think we're in the movement on that. They understand how important that is. When you deal with, uh, with the administration now, they're all about trying to generate jobs. That's why education is so important. Commissioner Jordan was talking about education. Education, when industry lands here, they want to know that you've got a good education system. And education is going to be important. Roads are going to be important. Have a good, uh, low tax, good quality of life. And those, those things are perfect for Rutherford County. I mean, you're, we're set up perfect for that. So I anticipate uh, that we move forward on the roads. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It all comes back, as we always talk about money. We, we get our money for transportation. Uh, I sponsored a bill two years ago where they cannot take any money out of the transportation fund now. It's 21.3 cents per gallon. It's not on a percentage basis. So right now, gasoline prices and the economists are telling us that gasoline is going to go up. If it goes up, it means the revenue is going to go down in transportation. So now we have electric cars that are being built right here in Rutherford County, or the Nissan is beginning to build the electric vehicle. Uh, GM's got electric vehicle. We're not getting any revenue for those electric vehicles. We've got to come up with a situation on that. They're going to be running the roads, but we don't have. Right now, all our transportation funds comes from the gasoline tax and the diesel tax. So uh, that's going to be something I see that the administration will look at down the road to see what we're going to do. But I do think they're very, I met with the new commissioner of transportation last week two times. and. He's a mayor of, uh, was Mayor Franklin, so he understands the importance of roads. So I think they're going to be very open, and they see how important it is. And it's all going to come down to priorities. It's all going to come down to, um, we have the funding to do those roads. So I, I will continue to push for that. I know the delegation knows how important it is. If you travel Jefferson Pike, it's very dangerous. From the, from the 840 side to 231, it's very narrow. No uh, shoulders on the road, so... Uh, Commissioner Black, I guarantee you that will be uh, first on the agenda, and that's being talked about. So roads are important. Thank you. One more follow-up, if you don't mind, Chairman. Uh, since we mentioned uh, some taxes, I believe, and I'm, I might have this bill named incorrectly, but I think it's called the Technical Corrections Bill. That's the one that is this big, and it's the last day of the session, and things kind of go through. And we learned by surprise last year that we had a, about a $200,000, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor Burgess, $200,000 surprise in that bill by uh, registration fees that were eliminated. Yeah, uh, I voted against Rutherford that County. bill, by the way. I remember that so, very well, yes. Yeah. So my comment would be, uh, I, I know it's tough the last day or two, but uh, those type of things we really shouldn't be surprised by and would appreciate some input back from you guys as to what's happening there. I'm glad you brought that up, Commissioner Phillips. We actually met with the Deputy Governor and uh, 
the assistant to the governor, Kate, uh, on Friday, we had a meeting with them, and that was one of the things we suggested to this administration. Uh, the six years I've been there, every year, the last two or three days of session, they would have a technical corrections bill. And it may be the year you're talking about, it was 78 pages, because I remember reading every word on every page of that bill because I had just had a bad feeling about it, but we have told them not to do that. Uh, not to use that bill. In the past, that technical correction bill has been used to slip in things that they didn't want to pass legislation. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's just, it's been done for years. And so we've asked the administration not to do that this year because it does put a burden on the General Assembly um, in the last hours of session and trying to do that and things get in there just like what you're talking about that, that uh, shouldn't have got in there and people don't realize it's in there. So we've asked them not to do that this time, and I'm glad you brought that out. For the record, we'll, we've uh, done that, so thank you. Thank you. Senator Tracy, going off, uh, piggyback off of that, it's, it's, it's been done. Is there any way that you can come back and, and correct um, that measure as far as what was done in Rutherford County? Is that something that can be done early in the, in the session? Commissioner Farley, everything is possible. <laughs> uh, when you pass legislation, you can always repass something the next year to change it. So to answer your question, it's possible. And, and the reason I ask that, I mean, I understand why it was done. It was to create jobs in Hamilton County, but it affected, it had far reaching you know, effects to people in Rutherford County, and I think also in, in Murray County, which uh, Senator Ketron, is, is, that's part of his district, and I think uh, he might be willing as well to, to help. Very good point. So uh, that's another one, uh, get that to Commissioner Phillips so he can get it to us in February. Right. Since he's the point person. Now, you need the point person to get us the information. Well, I'll be honest with you, I, I, as soon as we get to here now, I'll be more than willing to make a, a motion to <laughs> to get you send us something on that but yeah to answer your question yeah it's possible thank you representative sparks yeah real quick just want to compliment <clears throat> commissioner uh black and the county commission i think if i'm not mistaken y'all have passed three three resolutions on jefferson pike asking the state to widen it and um uh I don't know if they've got into right-of-way acquisition yet or not, but, um, you know, when you when you've talked to a mother that's lost a child on that road, like I have and Commissioner Black has, um, and you see the, the countless accidents that we've both seen, and you see the traffic where you can't get through Jefferson Pike, um, it's a need. But, um, you know, going back to Nissan uh, with the LEAF facility and so forth, um, they used to say it was $60,000 a minute when that assembly line was down. I could be wrong on those numbers. It was 50 or 60,000 every time that assembly line was down. Uh, with the countless wrecks that, that, that we've seen on that road, uh, it should be a priority. And just want to compliment the county commission for, for your assertiveness. As you know, the squeaky wheel gets a grease and uh, Senator Tracy has been real assertive with that. But I want to ask you, Senator Tracy, do you know if they've done any right, right of way acquisition on Jefferson? To my knowledge, they have not. They're in the engineering phase, but we can check on that uh, this week. We can find out, but I don't think they have. But they're, they're moving forward on that, and uh, you have to appropriate money at each phase. Usually, I'd say that's the frustrating thing about uh, road building. It's usually in three phases. You do the engineering phase first, and then you do the right-of-way phase second, and that takes longer than I like for it to take because you have to ne negotiate with all the landowners down the way and then the third phase is funding the project and then you have to put that out for bids and so it takes a little longer than than you'd like but that's that's where we are and it's y'all know that but i'd like to see it move a little faster yes at this time commissioners if uh, there's no objection i'd like to offer the floor to uh, any other commissioners or the mayor if, uh, if y'all have any questions any thoughts any comments you'd like to share with the delegation at this time Commissioner Ely. I have been asked to uh, express uh, the concerns of a number of constituents 
uh, who, in regard to uh, the security of their uh, public pension funds. Uh, and the constituents that have been in contact with me uh, all participate in the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System. I'm going to read a paragraph from their most recent um, newsletter for the Tennessee Retired Teachers Association, and I would like then for you to comment on what might be moving in this direction. Some of our newly elected legislators are looking for ways to save money, and one of the things they are looking at is the 30 plus billion dollars in the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System. That amount of money is a great temptation when you're trying to balance a budget. However, these funds secure teacher pensions and the pensions of all other retired public employees in the system. And this letter is asking the members of this organization, of which I am not a member, by the way, to stay alert to what is happening on the Hill so that we can try to preserve the pensions of all 30,000 plus teachers and other retired persons in this system. Uh, I don't know who to address this to, but if you could respond, are you aware of any changes that uh, could potentially be made in this fund? Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Ely. To my knowledge, there's nothing been said, not anything has been said about the retirement system. Uh, we had a meeting Friday with uh, uh, the commissioner well, we, we had meetings with commissioners. We had meetings with the chairman of finance in the Senate, and uh, we asked him that question point blank, and to his knowledge, there's nothing been said. Our pension fund, from what he said, is very solvent. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no plans to take that money. It's very, um, the pension fund is very, very uh, looked on as you just can't hardly touch that money, so I don't see any effort or I haven't heard any effort to get that money. I know there's a lot of rumors out there. I've had a few phone calls about it, I've had a couple of emails about it. To my knowledge, there's not been any effort at all to do that. What we do our pension fund in Tennessee is very good. We have a, a joint committee that, that deals with pensions. Uh, we have uh, a lot of people that are involved in that. We have a department that handles the pensions. So I, I don't anticipate anything being done with that. Thank you, that's very encouraging. Thank you very much. Anybody else? I'd like to, oh, I will say something about the pension. It's off limits. At least when you're looking at it as us as legislators in Tennessee, you're not gonna mess with the pensions. The problem we are having, all of us are having, 401ks, pensions, state pensions, you need to direct that energy to the federal government. Now, with the Republicans taking over the Congress and the House, or rather, you're not going to have that problem. But Barney Frank and his banking committee, as and also the Senate banking committee, at the end of last year, we're looking at confiscating 401ks, public pension plans, and bringing them all into the Social Security Administration. That what is going to create a revolt. That's why it didn't get very far. I mean a national revolt. The same thing will happen in Tennessee. If we go to touch that money in Tennessee, you're going to see a national revolt. And it'll start in the House, at least on the Republican side. Um, and I don't think there's that many Democrats that are willing to touch that either and mess with it. So I'd almost say a little bit of scare tactics in the article there, but that's off limits. We'll find other ways to come up with the money, either through cutting the budget, uh, well, through cutting the budget, that's going to be it, because I, I won't vote for a tax increase. Uh, commissioners, committee members, any uh, any other comments? Commissioner Stevens. Thank you for being here with us tonight. I had two questions. The first one is about the BEP program. I'm not very learned in this law yet. I, I intend to, to uh, get more familiar with it shortly. But my understanding is that there's a provision in there called maintenance of effort to where the county has to keep funding education at the exact same level that we funded it last year. We can't cut below what we put into it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Uh, Mayor, 
but I was just wondering if any of you would be willing to sponsor legislation to uh, repeal that requirement to give us more control over our education funds or if you would uh, be willing to sponsor something that puts waivers in effect so that the Department of Education can uh, in, in serious financial circumstances like we find ourselves now to allow the counties to reduce what they put into this uh, program if, if we have to balance the budget. I guess this is the hot question, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if the county commission in Rutherford County wants to do that, I'll sponsor it in the House. Um, I think everything has got to be on the table. And I'll tell you right now, after talking to uh, the governor today at this education uh, conference, as well as uh, both chairman of the education committees in the House and the Senate, everything is on the table there as well uh, in figuring out how to reform education. So there's nothing that's not going to be on the table. And that should apply at the county level as well. And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Senator Tracy, but I believe we can pass a bill that will only pertain to Rutherford County if the rest of the representatives don't want their counties to be involved. So if it's just particular to Rutherford County, and this is what you as the county commission need and want and desire, then bring it forth and we'll see what we can do. And we'll meet as a delegation and find out uh, the best course of action. Well, as uh, Mayor Burgess knows, when you start dealing with the BEP, it's, it's a lot more to it than this has been worked through quite a bit. So, um, I mean, we'll see how things go. I, I'll, I'll uh, leave it at that. Uh, the BEP is very complicated, and you start getting involved in that, and you push it one area, it's going to come out the other area. So you got to be very careful with the BEP. The few years I've been there dealing with it, it's, it's not uh, – as easy as you might think it is, uh, but I'd say, you know, everything will be looked at. Um, uh, very, very important that at the at the legislature, at the General Assembly, we're very careful with the BEP because we want to fund it first because BEP, BEP funding affects every 95 counties in the in the state of Tennessee, plus it, the other school systems. The the city systems and the special school system, so it affects everything. When you start dealing with BEP, it's not that easy. So I, I'll just leave it at that. It's always open for discussion. We always discuss BEP, but it's it's gone through very carefully. And when you start pushing in one area, it goes out another area. And y'all know that dealing with county government, you got to be very careful. So, uh, but it'll be looked at. I think BEP funding will be looked at by this administration to make sure it's fair. You try to make sure the funding is fair across the board. We changed it two years ago and made it a little bit better, I think. Um, and, you know, it, it's always willing to be looked at. And I have a, one more question, if you don't mind. And I've already talked to Senator Tracy and Representative Carr about this before the meeting. But a couple of years ago, the General Assembly uh, passed this bill called the Tennessee Residential Lending Brokerage and Servicing Act. And I've had a couple of constituents who've contacted me about this. What this law does now is it makes it to where uh, if, if I want to get a loan from a private individual who's not defined as a, you know, quote unquote, mortgage lender, that's prohibited now. And the purpose of the bill, as it's stated in the law, is to, uh, to guard against predatory lending. But these people that it's supposed to protect are the people who can't go to the bank and get a loan in the first place. So they're not going to be able to get a loan for uh, their home unless their uh, immediate family member will make that loan for them. And there's a couple of other exceptions. But, you know, if I needed a home loan and I wanted to get um, an uncle or an aunt to make a loan for me to do that, uh, that's prohibited by this uh, this law. And I just, you know, we keep campaigning and, and running on uh, against big government, but then you have all these regulations in here about what you can do with your money and so forth. And I was just wondering if any of you would be willing to sponsor a bill uh, to the to repeal this or amend it. Um, there is already individuals in the House looking at a bill to alter that. 
And the latest I've heard is they're going to allow maybe as many as, uh, and what you're getting at is somebody who has uh, several rental properties and they're trying to sell a house and they want to personally finance it to the person who's wanting to purchase it. They're looking at limiting that to a number like five or eight, but that is being looked at and uh, I don't know the specifics yet, but there may be a bill that comes up to, to change that and, and fix that whole problem because you're right, it is a problem for certain individuals who are trying to sell their properties, they don't want to hang on to them, uh, or they'll go bankrupt in some cases. Anybody else? Commissioner Jernigan? I don't have no question. I just want to make one comment. Uh, I, I was glad to hear uh, Mr. Sparks got on the Transportation Committee down there. I think he'll do an outstanding job. And uh, Jim also being chairman, uh, Rhodes is near and dear to me to deal with. And uh, we appreciate all the help we can get in Rutherford County. I know there's several projects that the state's looking at to help with and all. And uh, look forward to y'all's gentlemen's help on anything we can get done. Commissioner Sandy? No, I, I, I'm no good. questions for them, but I have no. a question for you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I just want to, I guess we'll close this this part with um, just telling Senator Tracy, Representative Walnut, Representative Sparks, we appreciate you all being here. Appreciate Representative Carr being here. Um, welcome to stay. We just, I know y'all are very busy. We just appreciate um, kind of giving us a forecast and, and kind of seeing where we are as a, a county commission, at least a steering committee, um, and appreciate you all always listening to us. You always answer your phones, <laughs> which I appreciate. And um, again, also, the, please consider the reverse as well as you all come up with issues that affect our county. You have your own constituents that you reach out to, but also reach out to us as uh, hopefully we can help you as well. Um, I guess we'll close out that. Commissioner Sparks. I mean, uh, Representative Sparks, sorry. Real, real quick, I just, I am looking for feedback from commissioners as well as teachers. You know, we did talk about race at the top and, um, so my, my office, if anyone wants to call me, 741-6829. Uh, I do want feedback because I know there, there may be some pushback as like they told us today. But one thing, um, you know, sometimes you, as y'all know that y'all went through your, your um, uh, election and you hear from people and you see the needs and, and you, you see, you know, a lot of times you see the hurts. Um, but you know, you, you do have hope out there. We're, we're still in one of the greatest states in this union. Uh, we're in one of the greatest counties in this state, one of the best places to do business. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of hope out there, you know, talking about the sales revenue coming in. Um, but, you know, we are living in some unprecedented times, and I think the, um, the thinking sometimes has to change from it can't be business as usual. But, uh, but my number, please call me. I, I do want feedback, 741-6829. Thank you. Very well. Thank you, gentlemen. I guess we'll move on to any other business. Commissioner Sandlin? Yeah, Mr. Sorry. Chairman, I was just um, basically wondering if we've got to have it anything to them, our representatives, by the 17th. That's our next full commission meeting night. Um, the steering committee needs to get something on the floor, and I don't know if we need to have a special call meeting. I hate to throw something out you know, tonight without fully thinking about it and, and researching it just a little bit, but um, we're not going to be able to act on it on a full commission level until the 17th, though, and that's when they need the bill with the state. So um, I don't really know how that's going to work. <laughs> um, maybe we should have acted on something in January, I guess, and I, I, I hate that. I think we've, we've done them quicker than that, but... Uh, uh, or we've always turned it in in February, but it seems like this year it's a little tighter with our full commission meeting being the night they need to have it back that day. Mm -hmm. I don't know the solution. I'm bringing up a question, so. Just, Mayor Burgess. It may be possible, even though we don't have all the details of exactly what we might request, it may be possible for us to suggest and require request from some of our legislators that they file what we would call a caption bill. 
that would just be a paragraph or a few sentences that might describe something that we could later hang all the meat on, you might say. So that, that occurs with some frequency. So we might want to identify those one or two or three things that we have some real serious interest in and get them to, to at least do that. And we need to confirm that they, that they can do that, but I believe that happens routinely. Our next steering meeting then is the February 7th. the 7th. Okay. Correct. So we could do it there and notify then our legislators and then um, maybe act on those, then the full commission. Is that what you're talking about, Mayor? And then being able to put everything together at that point? Right. It might, it might be a two-step process whereby we get the caption bill just to address the broad topic of what we want to consider and then okay. come back over the next few weeks and actually put the resolution together that specifically uh, identifies and clarifies the request and then they still would have time to carry it through the system. You know as well as I do, Mayor, that we, I mean, we don't want to send anything up there not well thought of and thought about and, and really, uh, as we've suggested and required, I guess, two-thirds vote from the full commission to send anything, you know, uh, to our representatives. So it's, you know, in majority. And I'd like to have, you know, of course, 21 votes for what we're trying to send to, to show how much we are backing whatever we're sending. So, okay. Commissioner Farrell. I've been jotting some notes down here and, and I guess I can put this in the form of a motion if it's okay with the committee. But I'd like to make a motion that we ask the state delegation, our state delegation to present a caption bill, what, the first thing would be to rescind the part on the Technical Correction Act, the part that deals with uh, op original equipment manufacturers, uh, the registration. And then if, if, any, if, we, if someone wants to add the other part as far as the County Powers Act on there, but I'd like a motion that we do that caption bill and to the first thing on there be to rescind that, that part in the, um, on the correctional Technical Correction uh, Act. I'd like to ask the, the, our state delegation to um, submit a uh, caption bill that, to rescind the part in the Technical Correction Act that deals with the original equipment manufacturing registration. Mayor, would we need to say rescind or just address? Address, okay. Is that okay with you? That's fine. To address the part in the technical correction that deals with original. The original equipment manufacturer. Registration. Registration. We have, we have second, second. Mr. Jordan. Did, we, did, we, did you add the county powers act to that? Well, I mean, <coughs> if, if the committee would want to, we could, you know, we could go ahead and add that in there as far as the county powers act. We can, we can do this just as a matter of discussion. We can do this tonight, which I don't think anybody probably has a problem with, or we will meet again before the next commission meeting on February 7th. Uh, but I, I have no issue with doing it either way, but if we want to make sure we have the wording Let's right. Let's do them separately, though, so we keep them sure. motion sure. separate and keep them. Okay. I, well, I'll, do the, I'll just leave my motion as is, and okay. someone wants to do a second one. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion about that motion? You want to read that motion again to just make sure we've got it right? <laughs> <laughs> Would you please? Basically, what I'm trying to do is I want to ask the state delegation to res to address or rescind, uh, but address the part in there where they they took out where we're not getting the wheel tax from from okay. Nissan. What was it called? The original manufacturer. Original equipment manufacturer.
I appreciate you reading that back, if only for me. <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion about that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We have an, any, another motion? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd bring up then if we're going to address it now, I was thinking we might address it in February of meeting, but uh, I mean, it suits me just fine uh, to ask our um, representatives to look into the County Powers Act and, uh, and I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it broad uh, and we can send a, an attachment to it and what it's relating to and it's basically relating uh, or asking to rescind the uh, real estate transfer portion of that bill. So if they would look into the County Powers Act is my motion to send to the, uh, our representatives. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion about that motion? I think we're going to send it together right now as, as, as an Caption. attachment bill. Caption. Caption. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. All right. Any other business? I have a couple of things. Um, one being just another reminder that next month in February, on February 7th, we'll be uh, speaking again about the anti-litter resolution. Uh, Mr. Robertson has posted that on our website, uh, the full resolution as last uh, we discussed it, as well as a comment section on there. We encourage all um, citizens to take advantage of that and if they have any comments, also to please come that night if uh, they would like to and share their thoughts, um, hopefully on that. Also, um, as another item of business, Mayor Burgess informed me right before the meeting that the, uh, one of the lawsuits that we were involved in, Rutherford Property Owners versus Rutherford County, and more specifically the Shelton lawsuit case against uh, Rutherford County as well as Mr. Cope, just to inform all of you all that the federal court has dismissed that case, uh, my understanding is in its entirety, correct? So just wanted to inform uh, you all about that. Uh, yes, sir. Were we responsible for any legal fees on their side or? We haven't seen any. I haven't actually read the document, but no, I don't think we will be responsible for the, their legal fees. We are responsible for ours, which have been substantial. So, yeah. Well, my, <laughs> my other question was, was there a separate lawsuit from Bar Tour for $2 million to because he wasted his time. That got thrown out. That, that was thrown out. Yeah. That was thrown out earlier. I hadn't heard of it. Well, there were two separate lawsuits. I mean, of course, we had one from Rutherford Properties and one from the Shelton family. So this will dismiss all of it as far as I understand. Okay. That's good news. Commissioner Stevens, did you have something? Well, sure, why not? I'm not on the committee, but I was wondering if anybody would make a motion to pursue the county's legal fees against the plaintiffs, you know, since they ran up our legal fees. Maybe we'll see if we could recoup some of those from them since the taxpayers funded the defense. Well, I, Mr. Chairman, I was going to ask that uh, mayor. I haven't read this yet. I just got it in, the, in my mailbox, so I don't know if it states that or not, but um, our legal fees then, do you know if we're responsible for those or if there was a, uh, if it was I in there? I suspect the legal fees was not addressed. I mean, I don't, they didn't, uh, with us being dismissed from the lawsuit, I'm sure that we're not going to be responsible for theirs, but I don't think we probably addressed on if one could recover our legal fees from them. Well, yeah. we had, uh, to answer, I think, uh, Commissioner Stevens' question, though, we had mentioned that in some earlier meetings, and we've talked about this a lot, so I don't know which one, so uh, about if we were to win the, the lawsuit as far as our legal fees being taken care of. And so we had, we had asked that. I don't know in what form or which meeting that was, but uh, we have already asked that. Uh, I think the probably the thing that we could do is to request from our attorneys 
make an assessment of what they think the probability of this is and, and give us a recommendation. I don't want us just to go into this with a one in a million chance. If they think it's a reasonable chance we should do that, they should bring it, that recommendation back to you and y'all can decide then if we want to pursue it or not. I'll put that in form of a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion about that motion? Well, it, it does a number of things. I mean, the the county's been sued and will always continue to be sued about something, I'm sure, uh, in whatever department or whatever format. But uh, if, if we look at these lawsuits and try to recoup our, our uh, attorney's fees out of these lawsuits that, that have not been generated by us but have come from wherever, then, uh, you know, maybe there won't be so many. All right. Any other discussion about that motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Any other business? Seeing none, hearing none. Motion to adjourn. Dismissed.